Welcome to the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. This program covers all the important details of every major issue that come up in Ghana. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe. In this edition, we are going to talk about the other side of the conversation on the anti-LGBTIQ bill, which is ongoing in terms of all the discussion forums in the country. We are going to look at what exactly do people who identify as LGBTQ+, go through and how do they feel in the midst of all of these discussions. We would only know if we speak to somebody who has ever experienced any of these issues or any of this kind of sexuality in this country. We'll be right back to talk more after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe, and my guest is a pastor, somebody who can give us a vivid description of how people who identify as LGBTQ feel when they live in a country like Ghana, where there's a lot of uh, dissatisfaction and also a lot of hate, if I have to say that, towards people who identify as LGBTQ. Our guest is Aaron Ajete Akron. Aaron, yes, welcome to the lowdown. Thanks for having me. So, why are you the best person to speak on LGBTQ rights and also how people who identify as LGBTQ plus feel? Have you ever been somebody who identified as, as such? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, I've lived in that lifestyle for about 20 years now. So I know how it feels like to be there. I know how it feels like to be hated. I know how it feels like to, to be loved at the same time. Yeah. So if you say you've lived that lifestyle, does that mean you are no longer identifying as any of the alphabets in the LGBTQ plus? Yes, please. So which of them were you identified by in the past? Oh, I, I identified myself as a gay person. A gay person? Yes, please. And when did it start? At what age? Uh, okay, I've always had that feeling when growing up. So um, I, I got the opportunity at the age of nine to, to experience it. So at the age of nine? Nine years, yes. So my first encounter was at the age of nine. So when you say opportunity, what do you mean by that? I mean, I've always had that edges, you know. So an opp opportunity presented itself and I went in for it. So you were not invited into the act, but you went for it. Yes. Can you give us a scenario of how it happened? Okay, so we were just playing as children, you know, and um, we were eight, um, five boys, three girls, and each guy was supposed to choose a partner. So they did and left with two of us, a family friend and mine. So, so then I was like, since I behave like a girl, let me be your girlfriend. And so that was it. And how did you feel about that? I felt okay by then. Okay. Mm. And you said for 20 years? For almost. Let almost 20 yeah. years. Uh, so but when you count from um, 19 to, I think, 20, was it 27? So like 18 years. But the reason why I say almost 20 years is that I've, I've always had that feeling. I just didn't get the right time. So the, the time, um, the opportunity presented itself was at the age of nine. So at what point did uh, a third party or another person uh, see you and accused you of being gay? Okay, um, I think after school. I mean, people always... Secondary school or JSS? Before even that, people always say that. Do, do they in say... A, in a you local are... dialect, you know, Kojobis, yeah, just because you behave like a girl. But that, that doesn't mean you are gay. Kojobis, exactly, yeah, that exactly. People, people think gay. once they see someone behaving like a girl, the person is gay. No. From my experience, I can say that no, it's far beyond that. It's just a feeling. Anyone can be gay at any time. So at what point did uh, people see you as gay? Uh, my family got to know because I, I started moving with some, some friends. So they heard, oh, this is what these people do, you know. So my dad, I mean, he advised me as a which son. Stage, which stage of your life was that? Is it I JSS or secondary school? The stage. 
can't really not JSS with my family. I talking about my family. yeah your family. Like, oh, my family was G um, senior high school. Senior high school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then my dad was like, you know, he was giving scenarios of someone who went to someone's house and they did this to the person. Da 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 da. da. So if I'm into such, I should just stop. You know that I denied. But with my mom, I can boldly tell her that this is how I feel. So if anyone, I mean, insult you or point fingers at you that oh you have a gay son, there's nothing wrong with it. You know. So you you denied to your dad, but you came out to your mother. Exactly. And how did your mother uh, take it? Uh, well, she loved me anyways. I mean, she loves me anyways. Because I can just go to her one-on-one -on -one and say, like, forget about what they are saying. Let's just talk about something else. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move on. So the group of friends you were with, were all of them identifying themselves as gay? Yes, please. And uh, how did they manage to live in the society that we are in right now? Now, so the thing is, okay, most of them were also girlish, you know. So now, um, they get attacked, blah, da, 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 being beaten, assaults, and all that. They go through so many things. I've been, I've been attacked before, not caught in the act of being gay or maybe having an affair. I was attacked because they were like, oh, you're walking like a girl. Oh, you're dancing like a girl. So not the attacks gay. was not because you were gay, but it was because uh, you were just... No, to them, okay, to them, they, 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 they go like, once you are working like a girl, talking like a girl, they assume that you're gay. So can you take us back to uh, one of the attacks you will never forget? Yes, so one of the attacks, um, I was beaten, I was really beaten, like seriously beaten. And my, I was just passing and this gang of boys were like shouting, insulting and all that. Then one came to me, he wanted to slap and I dodged and I mean... They all came at me and stuff. So then I, I was really beaten. I went home. My dad saw me. He was like, what happened? I said, this is what happened. They saw me and they were like, I'm gay. And they started beating me up. So my dad had to go to the house. With my whole family, I mean, my brothers, mm -hmm. everyone went to the house. We went around looking for that boy. And I mean, my dad asked some few questions. Like, what happened? He said, yeah, he's gay. And I was like, OK, did he do anything with anyone? He said, no. So, just, so we just left them. Yeah, so that was it. Um, I lost a tooth because of that. Mm. So you had the protection of your family? Yes, exactly. And though, we, you yes. go like, though we don't like what you're doing, but we love you as a son or as a brother. But at that time, your father didn't know you were gay, but it's just about being girlish, as you said, and the people you I, work with. He has, he knows. Okay. But I know my dad, he knows. Sometimes he just wants to hear from you. Okay. Because when I, I, I came out, that I'm, ch I'm a changed person now. I mean, you can call my cousins and go like, oh, now your brother knows the right hole, sorry. Now your brother is doing, I mean, he has a girlfriend now, da, 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 da. So meaning he knew. Okay. But just want to hear from the horse's own mouth, mm. you know. He's trying to be smart with me. So which community were you in when you were attacked? Uh, in the Muslim community. C can you mention, or you have a problem mentioning no, no, the community? No, no, around uh, Akrani town. Akrani town, okay. Yeah. And when the attack happened, uh, afterwards your parents came to look for the people who attacked you. Did you report to the police? No, we didn't. Okay. We didn't. And it, it became a family thing, you know. Mm. So went to their family, spoke to them that you know, this shouldn't happen again, you know. How bad were the injuries? Very bad. Mm. Swollen faces. I lost a tooth, so just yeah. imagine. Yeah, I can see some uh, marks and scars on your body. Is it also no, part no, of no, the no, attacks? No, they, no. they aren't. Okay. So is that the only attack you faced? Yeah, that was a serious one. But some, uh, we were chased and, and all that. Okay. So now let's come to the issue of being gay in mm. Ghana. Uh, mm. Since it was, a, it was a choice for you, was it? Um, should I say a choice? I was just acting upon my feelings. Okay. Let me put it that way. Okay. That's so, how I felt. I was yeah. just being led to do. Okay. So was there gay sex in your relationship? Yes. Okay. And your partner? Is your partner still gay or your partner is no mm, more? He's still gay. Okay. Mm. Are you still hanging around your, your friends? No, he's not here. Yeah, my friends, yeah. A okay. lot. I talk to them almost every day. Mm. Yeah, check up on them, pray with them and all that. Okay, so we'll be going on a break. When we come back, we'll talk about when you decided to not be gay mm. and what actually happened. 
So this is a lowdown. We are speaking with uh, Aaron Ajete Akron. He is a pastor and uh, he used to identify himself as LGBTQ. He's given us some information as to how he felt during those days. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe. Our guest is Aaron Ajete Akron. He's a pastor and someone who used to identify as gay. Aaron, so we're talking about your lifestyle in the past about 20 years when uh, you were attacked because you were girlish, as you said, and also later on you became gay. You had a partner and you had a group of friends who all identified as LGBTQ. What else was different about that relationship you were in besides the fact that it was a relationship between same-sex couple? All right, so I got exposed to all kinds of people that, made, uh, that led uh, me into doing drugs as well. Now, I'm not saying that all gays do drugs. You have gays who are very calm. You have gays who are very wild, like myself. So now, that led me into uh, um, um, drugs, cocaine, crack cocaine, weed, alcohol, and all that. So if you say it led you into drugs, is it your partner who led you into the drugs, or is the group of friends you are moving with? Um, I was a party type. You know, you can go for parties and maybe you meet someone who's into drugs. Or maybe meeting a partner, you meet someone who's into drugs. Because I was all over the gay dating sites and all that. So maybe if there's a hookup, I go for a hookup and the person is uh, the person is into drugs, I'll just do something and all that, yeah. So it's interesting you mentioned gay dating sites. Do you have a lot of them in Ghana? We have gay dating sites all over the world. Yes, but in Ghana, do we have yes. a lot of Ghanaians who are part of the gay dating sites? Now, when, when we go like, oh, um, gays are here, da, da, da. these are people we live with. Mm. You'd be so surprised that your cousin could be gay. Mm. These are people we work with. Your security man can be gay because you don't know what he or she does in his room. Mm. You understand? These are people we live with because it's just a feeling that they feel like. Um, just as I was saying, people think, oh, just because you, you walk like a girl or behave like a girl, you're gay. No, it's far beyond that. It's just feelings and it, it can be on anyone or anyone can feed, um, feel that feeling at any time. Mm. Yeah. So is there any uh, identifier for people who are gay? Because uh, a lot of people see, as you said, being girlish. I know a lot of people who are like, like that. They have more of uh, the feminine uh, uh, tendencies or characteristics, but they are not gay. Yeah. And we have others who are and are gay. And we have other people who might not even have feminine tendencies, mm. Mm. but they are gay. Is there anything that you could use to identify people who are gay? For now, mm, it's a little bit difficult because, as you're saying, someone may not even have any sign or characters of being girlish, can, but the person is gay, you'll be so surprised. Get so now I can go like, here's a description. What if I miss it, you know? Sometimes you'll be pointing fingers at the wrong person, not knowing the one standing right beside you is gay. So it means that most of the accusations cannot be, uh, I mean, substantiated because yeah. you can't just see someone and assume they are gay. Yeah, unless probably the person just open up to you, mm. I'm gay. Okay. So, you've heard about the bill, that's mm. the uh, promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021, which has been tabled in Parliament. Uh, it was tabled this year by a group of uh, MPs and other people who are interested in ending the, the activities of gay rights or even gay people in the country. When you heard about it, did you think it was in the right direction? Well, yes, it is. I mean, I support the bill in a sense that now we say these are people, the LGBT is a community where they have their rights 
and um, 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 they need to be loved and accepted. Then again, I will ask myself, what mm. happens to someone who is not born gay? Because they assume that it's genetic, people are actually born with it, which is a lie. So what happens to the person who was so curious about it and tried it? Did his curiosity change his genes? What happens to the person who got involved into it because he needed money and this rich person goes like, you know, before I give you this money, let's do this. Did that money change his gene? What happened to the person who was raped? Did the rape change his gene? Do you get my point? So now it is not genetic. Now, this bill, though it's a bit harsh, but I mean, there are rules and regulations in life. Even with this company, you have your rules and regulations. God created us. He gave us rules and regulations. So there has to be a rule and regulation because if not, at the end of the day, innocent people will suffer. Um, there was a story that um, a teacher, I mean, raped 19 children quite recently. Are they born gay? So now this law will, I mean, help such people, victims like that. Fine, if you believe you were born gay, be gay. The law is not saying stop being gay. Or don't feel, oh, when they pass the law, your feelings will just disappear. You, you can't force something on someone. Whatever you, you, you the kind of sex, sex you have in your room has nothing to do with me. Why are you saying this, this me, I have this kind of sex? Accept me. Now you're giving me opportunity or, or uh, you want my opinion because you're coming to me that this is it. This is what I do. I can say yes or no. And me saying yes doesn't mean I hate you. If I don't like something, I don't like something. Saying no to you can be love because I don't like it. I'm being honest with you, I don't like it. Does it always have to be yes, yes, yes? Now they find out that when you can find out that when this, you say no to this, you go like, you're homophobic. You, are, uh, you don't like them. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are giving this, um, a hateful speech and all that. I don't like it. You can't force me to like something I don't like. Just, we just, you know, we should get it from that angle as well. This is it. Whatever sex you are, you are having, I care not to know. I don't want to know. Okay, I'm sure the audience would want to know the details of the bill and I would take them through the yeah. details of the bill. But right now, I just want to know if you had not stopped being gay, would you have supported the bill? Now, a friend asked that same question. Now, nothing can stop the will of God. Bill or without bill. If God is saying you are going to be saved, a friend said, let me put it right. He said, Aaron, so if this bill was there, let's say five years ago, where would you be? Probably you not even get me here to interview me. And that's true. Because I would have stand for my rights. But then again, what is the will of God? As a Christian, what is the will of God for me? It's not about what I'm feeling. If God truly created me in his own image and likeness, he said he is holy. I need to be holy. And this is not holiness. This is perversion. This is not holiness. So that's the will of God. So now I've channeled my, my, myself to the will of God. So now let's talk about you deciding to stop identifying yourself as gay. Mm. When did this happen? Oh, it started about 2015 when I started having weird dreams and strange happenings, you know. Then I was like, what's happening to me? Sometimes, sometimes I can just wake up and see ants biting my eardrums, ants coming out of my ears, literally. In the dream? No. <laughs> literally seeing ants coming out from my ears and stuff. And sometimes I can see myself being laid dead, crying, like, well, uh, you didn't repent, now you're dead, you know, that kind of thing. And sometimes I can just go off where I can only hear a voice speaking to me. I can be in a room with you speaking, then I cannot hear what you're saying anymore. My mind or my ears are just focused on one voice. 
so that was it so that's how i started and you know so many encounters i didn't understand um then i went to the church you know to to for help was it a church you normally frequent no no. So you, do, you you didn't attend church at all. I'm I'm coming from a Christian home. Mm. You go to church every Sunday, but by then I was going to church because my dad asked me to go. But okay. probably my brothers are going, so let's go. Mm. Understand? So I wasn't, and because of my lifestyle, I just want to be myself. I always want to be myself. I don't care. I, I just want to be myself. I lived a life which I was okay with, without thinking about what your um, your your concern about about it. Um, your opinion is not needed, you know, but at the end of the day, that's not the will of God. There's, there are rules and regulations. There are laws, you know, so now I realize, okay, I'm just living anyhow. Why don't you try this way as well? And that was after the dreams and then yes. the feelings that you yes. had yes. and you decided to go to church. Yes, so I was going to church, you know, um, they, were, they showed me love, unlike the other churches I was. Was that after you? Told them what you were up to or what you I were into. I never opened up to anyone. In the church? Funny enough, I never opened up to anyone. Mm. But just that um, through the word of God, through prophecies and stuff, they got to know what I was into. Mm. Maybe it was obvious for them to know because, you know, I was just being myself. Then through prayers and, 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 and counseling and all that, now... As a Christian, the Holy Spirit came upon me and led me into all truth of the Word of God. This is wrong. As a Christian, it's wrong and forbidden in the presence of God when it comes to LGBT. That's 2015. You know what I mean, it started from there. From so 2018. There. So three okay. years later, yeah. I gave my life to Christ. So three years later, I was like, okay, Lord, let your will be done. And that was it. So what was the first thing you did? When you decided to give your, your your life to Christ, the first thing I did, I I was I was I had dreadlocks and my piercings and stuff. I couldn't live a day without my piercings. Mm. Sometimes when I'm going to school and I leave any of my earrings, I need to brush back to get it before going to school. So they were like try like a new leaf. So I took everything out. I cut off my my hair and all everything. I went home, I prayed, I asked God so many questions about it. Then he said, this is the time and you need to repent, you know. And a lot of people are going to see you and repent. But those who are very stubborn like you will have an encounter with me. Because I was asking so many questions. I have friends who have died out of this. Anal cancer, HIV, just name them. You know people who died out of I'm, anal cancer and I'm HIV. You, I can give you a long list of friends who are dead. And gone. And they were all gay? Yes, please. Mm. And they know, the community knows that the number of gays that die in a year, my brother, it's not easy. In your community? They know. They, the LGBT community. The LGBT itself community. Knows. They know the truth. I mean, I still talk to my friends. They go like, Aaron, you know this lifestyle is not good. But we have no choice. Just because this is how we feel and we can't control our feelings, we end up doing it. So you, know, you, you, consider so now, them, you consider them as innocent? Yes. You see? So now we have people who really want to change. And we have people who are, you know, uh, um, stubborn, let me put it that way, who are like, all oh, die, be die. Like, I'm just going for this. This is how I feel. So does it. This is how God created me. But what is the word of God saying about this? Sometimes, you see, whatever is happening, we need to go back to the word of God. What is it saying? concerning these issues. So what if the person doesn't believe in the word of God? Do you still think the person is wrong to no, go if, by their feelings? If that's that's you, but per my belief. Okay. You are entitled to your belief. But this is me. You can't change this is it. My uh my even we should put religion aside. My culture frowns on upon it. But you knew this when you started having the feelings. Exactly. So I was yeah. like So you are still innocent? Yes. So I keep telling people when any time that pops up, I go like, why is it a sin? Because this is how I feel. You understand? This is not something that I asked for. This is not something that uh, 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 I, I, I was taught. You see, they think, oh, there's a class for gays where people will come in and they will teach them how to be gay. No. There's this widely held belief that there are associations and there are groups that pay people to be gay 
and th those groups help push the agenda. Is that something you've experienced? Oh, no. Okay, so with that, that, that has been there for years. Mm -hmm. What they do is um, they help people because they know the community is suffering from HIV and anal um, cancer and all that. This group of people, I mean, try and, 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 and bring together the community to educate them. Fine, at the end, you are going to be paid for coming, for your transportation and all that. But they are not there to, I don't know how to put it. No, they are, okay, you can, you can term it as promotion because they are not asking them to stop, but rather helping them to live a better life. And you've been part of any of oh, such yes, meetings. Yes. And how yes. far have you gone to in terms of uh, location for such association or such meetings on um, health education for gay people? Um, Is it in Accra? Oh, yes. I mean, we live with them. Mm -hmm. I, I won't be surprised if you're one, sorry. I'm not talking about the gay people. I'm talking about the groups uh -huh. that uh, come to the aid of gay oh, people. Oh, yes, yes. In and Accra? Are, in Accra. And they are, um, they are here. I mean, we have them for uh, years now. Okay. Associations. And you were a regi registered member? <laughs> no. I was behind the scene in the sense that, you know, when these foreigners come for such meetings, like... Okay, a foreigner has been invited to, to come and see the situation at hand and help. Probably I've already spoken to that person on the date, uh, gay dating site. Okay. Then he goes like, oh, I'm coming to Ghana for so, 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 and so. Now I'll meet the person at the hotel. So before, let's say, the meeting, I'll meet that person. And we'll talk about what's happening in Ghana and what he can also help to improve the situation in Ghana. Mm. For the person who meet the board... Okay. You get it? So that was what... So behind scenes, I, I was trying to put things together. And also, you keep mentioning gay dating sites. Uh, we, we, we've we heard that a lot of people are enticed by money to be gays. Mm. And is that something that that's true? That's so true. Mm. Now, so they believe like, oh, being gay, there's a lot of money in there because, you know... For someone to just turn his back for you to have sex with, come on. So people go to the stream of paying people for sex, you know, so they think, oh, okay, there's money in this, let me do this. That's what I'm saying, it's not genetic. So did you also go in for money at a point? I, I won't say, okay, I'll term it at yes and no, because I was getting it anyways, because, you know, I, want, I, was, I wanted to be a nudist. I was a nudist. Okay. I wanted to be a male stripper. So it's like I post my naked pictures and I post it. And people go like, oh, I want to see more. And I'll say no. Then, okay, I'll pay to see more. So mm -hmm. this prostitution anyway. So the prostitution side, at the end, you get something. Yes. Yeah. So, let, let's so you got to that level. Yes. And you made some money. Mm. Okay. And you have a lot of friends who are doing the same thing. Oh, yes. I mean, most of the gays who are outside now, Ghanian gays who are outside now. Through, through that means, they went outside. Most of them. Mm. You go on the dating site, to meet someone, da, 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 da. the person who comes to Ghana, you meet. The person goes, sends you an invite. Since it's legal there, then you go, then they get married. So most of them are married. Mm. And the audiences, those who follow and watch these things, are they Ghanians or they are uh, foreigners? Non-Ghanians? Um, audiences as in? Those who watch and consume the content that you are providing, or those who follow uh, the things that you post, mm. your new no, pictures I mean, and the others. Ghanaians, everyone on social mm. media. As soon as you open, you go on my page or my profile, everything is there. Okay. So let's, let's come back to uh, when you saw God, as you said, and when you decided to change, when you, you uh, accepted Christ in 2018. Mm. So after what happened to you? You said you cut your locks, you stopped wearing your earrings, and there were so many changes in your life. How far did you go with the change? Okay, so now I had to tell my partner that, you know what, this is sin and forbidden in the presence of God mm. and all that. Then he was like, um, God loves you the way you are, da-da-da-da-da. Oh, you also a partner, Ghanaian? No. Okay. 
Which country was from your partner Greece. from? Greece. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you chat online or your partner was in Ghana with you? We chat online. Online. Okay. So he was like, do you know what? I'm coming for you. you are, they are trying to brainwash you. Da, 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 da. I'm coming for you. And all that. Um, I keep saying, no, you know, there's a sin and forbidden in the presence of God. So I need to cut him off. It wasn't easy for me to do, but I had to. Now, I started cutting some friends off because I needed time with God. Mm. I needed to know more about this new life, new, this new found faith. You know, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know more. So that's what happened. I mean, I cut some friends. I stopped going to the clubs, always in church, praying. Or maybe I go to the mountains to pray. Yeah. And were the clubs, gay clubs or regular clubs that people frequent in Accra? Oh, we have gay clubs, we have regular We clubs. have gay clubs in Ghana, and people identify them as gay clubs. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean... You are not mentioning the, names, I'm just uh, yeah, yeah, seeking anyway, the, f the facts. It's, it's no news, so... Okay. So, yeah, so that's what happened. Then. So besides your Greek partner, did you have any other partners in Ghana? Oh, yes. As I said, I was on the gay dating site, so it's just having fun. Okay. Like a hookup. You, yeah. you, you meet someone you have sex with, you meet someone you have sex with, and all mm. that. Okay. So at a point there was regret, you changed, and uh, you gave yourself to the church, mm. and you started to follow God, as you said. So at that point, when you cut off your friends, did you also try to pull them along to your side? Okay, for, um, for some time, I, I went off. Okay. Then later came back. So now I'll call you, talk to you, you know, what you're doing is wrong. And I mean, some weren't happy about it. I mean, they were giving me names mm. and all that. To the extent that they were like, oh, Aaron is sick of HIV. That's why I said he has changed. Now, that's a perception of the community. The only thing when someone comes out to go like, to be like, sorry, I don't want to do this anymore. Then you are sick, which is wrong. That's a perception they have. They think any time someone comes, though we have some people that come out and go like, I don't want to do this anymore, I regret doing it because at the end they are sick of HIV. So they think that goes for everyone. Mm. That goes for everyone that comes out, like I've changed and all that, because they know that's what this, uh, uh, the community is suffering from. Now, the bill there will try to, to help people. The bill is speaking against it, but at the same time, Providing support for anyone who needs help, come, they'll help you out. You see, they're not talking about that side of the bill. They're just focusing on the other side. I'm going to ask you uh, what your friends or your ex-friends who are gay, what they make of the bill. But before then, let me just read some key points from the bill. So the bill says individuals of the same sex who engage in sexual intercourse are to be fined between 50 and 5,000 penalty units or face a jail term of between three years and five years or both. Also, persons who use any medium or technological platform to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish, or distribute materials with the intention of promoting LGBTQI plus activities face a jail term of between five and ten years. All LGBTQI plus groups, associations, clubs, and organizations to be disbanded Anyone found guilty to be jailed between 6 and 10 years. Proscription of sex with or marriage to an animal. Ban on same-sex marriage and marriage to someone who has undergone sex reassignment. Anyone who funds or sponsors activities of LGBTQI plus groups or individuals to be jailed between 5 and 10 years. LGBTQI persons will not to be granted application to adopt or foster a child or children. Persons of the same sex marriage who make public show of amorous relationship to face jail term of between six months and a year. Anyone who physically or verbally assaults, abuses, or harasses a person accused of being LGBTQI plus to be fined between 500 pen penalty units and 1,000 penalty units or to be jailed between six months and a year. And then persons accused of being LGBTQI plus should be granted access to medical assistance if they make such a request during the period 
of their incarceration. So these are key points in the bill, and it covers everything from mm -hmm. people who are accused of being LGBTQI+, to those who are gay and would want to not be gay anymore, and also to those who even promote uh, gay activities in the country, those who have associations or clubs, and all the things you have mentioned. What feedback are you getting from people who are gay on this bill? Um, well, I've, one of my friends w was like, um, um, this bill will not, um, will only affect the poor and not the rich. Mm. This bill can only aff will affect more poor people than the rich. Now, what he means with that by that is that now those who are poor, you know, this our community. Some people can just hate you for no reason, and they can just uh, uh, put some two things together, one or two things together to accuse you. Try to frame. Someone who can just enter into your room, the person who just shout, I'm trying to do this with me. You know, so he was thinking from that side. Now, this bill, I think is good in the sense that it will help us check. You see, the community itself cannot be controlled. Most of them are like angry dogs. Now, if you are caught, how can you be caught? I mean, you don't have sex outside. You're having sex anyways. You don't have sex outside. The reason why you'll be found uh, um, guilty is that, you see, some people try to lure people in. You think you are born that way. I think you need to find someone who is born that way and do that way. That one there is between both of you. But now, if you try to bring someone's child in here, who is not born that way, that's when, because um, the news that came and the guy was, one guy was beaten, one was, uh, uh, how do you call it? Was thrown out of the city or whatever. Yeah. And all that. What happened? Look, listen to the story. Well, they tried to lure people in, someone who is not like that. So that's the only way you be caught. But if the person is not like, if the person is like that, the possibility of you being caught is very low. But if the person is not like that, and you are trying to bring the person, that's, that's the reason why the laws are there, so that you don't impose your feelings or your right on someone. Fine, it's your right. Have sex anyways. The Lord never says no one should have sex and have sex. But if you are caught, and these are the reasons... Or these are some of the points that can lead in the, uh, that can make you be caught. If I'm saying it right, these are some of the points or things when you do, you be caught. But if I am like that, you are like that, and we are together, who is going to know? We are in our rooms, like no one knows about it. But the problem they have is, you believe you gay, be gay, none of my business. But you try to bring someone's child in. That's the only problem. That's all leads to this beating and stuff. They, they need to look at it from that angle. There's one clause in the bill which talks about all LGBTQI plus groups, associations, clubs, and organizations to be disbanded. Anyone found guilty to be jailed between six and ten years. And I remember you said something about uh, some of the groups helping those who are gay to um, have safe uh, practice of sex, the, the gay sex. And also looking at those who may be infected or those who are infected with HIV, don't you think this would um, the bill or that clause in that bill is going to stop people who offer uh, medical services to people who are gay? In the in in, in the bill, you ma you made mention of it mm. that they are ready to support such people. When you were reading, you read it. Mm -hmm. I don't have my phone yet. I could have read it for you. They are they are ready to support people who are in need, mm. who need help. It's in there. Yes. It's in there. So, yeah. So, now that organi organization will take that responsibility. So, it will be official. They are in control of that. And there are reports of people who 
are gay, they go to hospitals, maybe they have a change of mind. And I think there's uh, one gentleman who is, who is out there in the media who said he went to a hospital and uh, the doctors, uh, they, he was sacked basically in some clinics that he's gay and they okay. can't treat him. So such people, do you think they would benefit no. from this bill? I don't get it. Okay, so he went to the hospital and go like, I do have anal sex. That's none of the nurse's business. But indeed, he was asked such questions and that interview okay, is out what, there. What made them, maybe he was sick of anal something. Yes, exactly. Uh, so then you go like, what's happening? So stigma. What, what made, hmm. you see, sometimes you need to ask, what made them ask that question? Hmm. When you go to hospital, do they ask you if you're gay? No, I'm asking you. Oh, of course, they don't ask if you are gay. You get it. Yeah, but if you me. have a, the person had a problem uh, at the anus and uh, Which is the question, likely to likely be to be so a they, gay they issue. ask the questions and then he said he was sacked from the that, hospital. That, that one is wrong. That they have no right to do that. Yeah. No. So with the bill saying they will support such people, yeah, that's, doesn't it also? Uh, not look at the fact that some parts of the society stigmatize people who might even come out and say they are gay and they need help. That's why the bill said if someone is found um, beating a gay mm. person, yes. you'll be jailed. Mm. It's in there. Yes, but people will deny them uh, so that, medical so, attention. So that's why um, the organization is trying to open to tolerate them. Mm. Maybe hospital so so and so will not the nurse there don't like it. The nurse is is culture or whatever view doesn't go with what you are doing. So he will say like he or she will go like no I won't, I, won't, I won't tend to you. But this bill or this group of people are saying we have a facility come as you are and we'll help you. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Aaron. We'll be right back after this break so we discuss uh, more about your feeling right now not being gay and also uh, the future of Ghanaian children in terms of this bill and how you think it's going to help uh, mm -hmm. stop any of the things that you mentioned uh, that are going on in terms of the LGBTQI plus uh, lifestyle. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. There's a lowdown. My name is Ni Akwe Ismail Akwe, and we are here with Aaron Akron. And uh, he is a pastor, and he used to be gay. He's no longer gay, and he's in support of the anti-LGBTQ plus bill. So there are a lot of uh, people who are against the bill, and a lot are also for the bill. So how do you feel when people are saying uh, the bill shouldn't be passed, especially when you are for it and you have ever experienced what it is like to be gay and you are no longer gay? All right, so... The community itself is divided. Now, part of them are saying, we don't want this lifestyle. We want to change from it. Another part is saying, we are in it to death do us apart. You get it? So, there's a confusion in there. Some people truly, um, they think that, you know, um, this lifestyle is not really good. It's not healthy. Just name it. I know that. And those supporting, those who are against this, this bill, most of them are not gays. But then you don't know what someone is going through. Maybe through this bill, someone can get help somewhere. Someone who is, who is in there and wants to stop may get that opportunity to seek for help. But you out there, you don't know anything about it, you've never even done it before, and you're going like, oh, that's their right, oh, that's their right, oh, that's, you see, it's LGBTQI+, right? Now, more letters. They're saying uh, genders is not, we don't 
have two genders. We have 50 something genders or so. Now, fine. If we allow, we give the right for this group of people to do whatever they want, fine. Then the next group of people will come, because we have people here in Ghana here who have sex with animals. They will come. This is our right. This is how I feel like. Then we'll grant them, because that's their right, right? Oh, it goes against the constitution. Uh, but the constitution <laughs> so, doesn't allow it. But do you have to uh, experience something to, to, to fight for the rights of people who say they deserve to go ahead with whatever it is that they want to do? That's what I'm saying. In a, um, you said it's a, uh, against the constitution. It's clearly stated. And the homosexuality stuff, the act is also against the constitution is, is against it, right? There's a lot of uh, debate on that. On that. Uh, it's not that clear. So No, uh, even, before allows, this, even before mm. this, it's is, is against it. There's no clarity. And that's why there's a lot of, uh, I mean, uproar against the bill because the bill is clear that it's against homosexuality. Okay. Now, that's what I'm saying. So a group of people will come. It's not about the constitution. At the end, the constitu constitution says so many things. But yes, so people are doing it. The constitution is against uh, prostitution. People are doing prostitution. The constitution is against so many things. But I'm robbing, but people are still robbing people here and there. The, prosti uh, the uh, constitution is against uh, uh, um, killing, but people kill people all the time. The constitution is against homosexuality. People have anal sex all the time. So it's just a law to, to govern us. If not, everyone can just come out and go like, this is how I feel. Let's do this. At the end, the, the bill is not saying stop being gay. Or the bill is not saying, or when the bill is being passed, your feelings will disappear. But the bill is there to help you. To help the feelings disappear. Yes, which can be possible. Mm. So he's saying you shouldn't be gay because you can be jailed if you are caught uh, being gay. Now, the reason why, okay, so the bill is in response, that's a reply to what they brought the first bill mm. that a child as in four years can be taught how to masturbate uh you know wear condoms where are we going as a country do you get it now if you have a son who is who is it, uh, who is four years and comes back from school and go like daddy i don't want to be a boy i want to be a girl from henceforth i want you to call me ama how are you going to feel now, if you call him um, Kojo instead of Ama, you'll be arrested. So these recommendations were for sex education. And I think it's something that a lot of people in Ghana and other African countries have fought against. And it's the same thing in Nigeria and in other places. And they fought against uh, the sex education that was recommended, that it be introduced mm -hmm. in educational curriculum. So you being in a position of... Uh, being called a gay at a certain time in your life, and even being attacked and all of this. What is your response to people who think there is a lot of hatred against people who identify as gay? Because currently, a lot of people are being attacked verbally on social media everywhere since the bill was introduced. And you can see the insults and all of those things against even people who you call or Babesia, people who have more feminine characteristics, being attacked and insulted. Uh, what's your, 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 your reaction now, to that? My reaction to that is, then again, in the bill, mm -hmm. the bill is giving provision for people who are being assaulted, who beat you, who attacked you because you're gay. Now, the police will be ready to go and arrest that person. It says they can be fined between 500 penalty units and 1,000 penalty units or to be jailed between six months and a year. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So the bill is also there to protect you. The bill is also there. You see, they're only talking about... Um, the only problem they have is that they can't promote it. Because it goes hand in hand. It's saying, don't promote it. Now, if you are in, in any situation that you need help, we are going to help you. But just don't promote it. If you believe you are born that way, why should you go around raising flags? This is how I have my sex. It's none of my business. You see, that's the thing. Yeah. And you can't say, and they're saying, you can't say no to it. They're saying, you are hate, there's hatred everywhere. 
people can dis dis disagree to so many things. You have your likes and dislikes. You can't, I can't force you to like something you dislike. I have my likes and dislikes. So if you are doing something like, no, I don't like this. That's my opinion. I don't like it. So what's your motivation of coming out to talk about being gay in the past and not being gay anymore? What motivated you to take that bold step? Okay, so the first time my, my story came out, people actually came out to me. I mean, they sent DMs. Oh, I found myself in your shoes. I want to stop. I'm not happy with that. You know, so I find a lot of people coming. Even when this thing was raised, I mean, this LGBT, da, 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 this bill, I had people from Nigeria, South Africa, sending me DMs, like, I find myself in your shoes and I want to stop. In Kenya, and just name it, Malawi, Tanzania, they, they send me messages like, Aaron, I find myself in your shoe. I'm not happy with it. So then I'm like, okay, then I have people like me who are not okay with that. And they, w they want a way out. So why don't I come out and speak? For you know, someone, someone may be listening to me and go like, wow, what you're saying is true. I've been through it before. And if it's possible for him to come out, then it's possible for me to, to come out. Have you been attacked after you being on other media platforms? You know, some threats, yes, most more. And by, by who, threats. Who, 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 which group threatened you? Uh, I mean, they hide behind profiles and speak so. So I'm just being careful, that's all. Thank you very much, Aaron Ajete Akron, for coming. And uh, you are a pastor of which church? Oh, I'm in a Bible school. Okay, so you are no, not a pastor yet? I'm doing the work. Before the work. and at the same time going to the school. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have do plans of starting a church? No, no, but for now we do online, Zoom meetings online. and stuff. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on the lowdown. Uh, this is the lowdown. My name is Nia Kwe Ismail Akwe. Watch us every Monday on Ghana Web TV. Thanks for watching. Be safe.